So, seven densities per creation, per universe. Okay, this being Earth, and there is a next creation, which already exists, because there is no time. From our perspective, from anything within this perspective, it is, in a sense, our next creation, but there is even cross-creation communication. Um, I have been told, I have, been, I have heard, I have, in a sense, perceived. So there is a previous universe, there is a next universe, and there's this universe. Each universe, um, according, again, to the best of my ability and my sources, consisting of these universally uh, seven distinctions. So the eighth density is simultaneously the first operates, uh, especially the last parts of that, the later stages of it, because each density has a spectrum as well with seven sub, seven sub, seven sub, because that's an infinite, infinite separation of light. Um, but the f this eighth density is also simultaneously the first density on the other end of the black hole from our point of view um, and the beginning experience, the beginning experiential stage of the next universe and everything that it learned from this one. But it does coexist already. So I'll just go through it one by one. There is the first density, which is that of beingness or awareness. Now, every consciousness has a, has a more manifest, visible expression of itself. We could call that the body, for example. So our, the, the expression of our level of consciousness is the physical human vehicle in this uh, way. Now, there's other third density physical vehicles that are non-human, but that are humanoid in that sense, that provide similar, a, a similar platform for generating experiences of yourself. Um, and so the, the physical counterpart of the first distortion, of the first density, of the first vibratory understanding of white light being separated in that sense into different planes of learning about itself, is what we would call earth, wind, fire, etc. It's basically the elements in that sense. And they are in a timeless state of being until after m a large amount of timelessness. So just imagine our particular God generating this universe, generating, sorry, this solar system with our particular planets. So when it starts to generate light and rhythm and starts to radiate rhythm throughout the um, chaos that is the potential energy of a particular portion of infinite space. It starts to then generate matter and planets that come together, that form together precisely because of that organization principle, because of the rhythm, because of the gravitational fields. It starts to attract each other, it starts to form planets. Those planets spend a, a, a large amount of non-time, or the experience is that of non-time, in a very timeless state of beingness, awareness. They're just purely being. And if you tune into a rock, you can get that sense of timeless beingness. That is the consciousness of a rock molecule or of a rock beingness is that of timeless beingness, awareness. But awareness without self-referencing whatsoever. There's no awareness of self. The rock does not know that it is. But there is awareness, there is presence, there is beingness. That's the first density. The second density is that of growth of movement, and you see that as those elements exist and coexist and collide into each other, flames and earth blowing against the air, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, wind blowing against the earth, uh, that kind of constant, constant conflict or constant friction between that, those physical expressions of the beingness awareness in its most fundamental stage, eventually starts to generate a consciousness of some kind, a next stage of consciousness. It starts to become aware of different portions of itself communicating in a way or colliding with each other. And that's when organic life starts to form. That's when it wants to suddenly move. It wants to move into greater consciousness. And so we get plant life, mineral life, we get animal life, etc. Those are the physical expressions of this next stage of consciousness, having learned the lessons of... Um, realizing space-time. Basically, what this timeless state of inorganic matter realizes as it continues to collide into itself, it starts to realize at some point space-time. It starts to generate a realization of space-time, at which point it becomes relevant to start to express oneself 
within and with and start to play with this space time. And that's again when the animal life and the plant life and all that starts to, uh, the consciousness is able to take on that vehicle of exploration. Now when it explores on that very instinctual, on self-conscious level for a period of space time, and it plays out all these instincts we see in animals, we see in National Geographic, um, the sense of who am I in relationship to the other, at some point, with all that relationship continuing to happen, the animal, or in some cases the plant life, or trees, start to form an awareness of self. Can you imagine how this could evolve? So if there's two beings that are unaware of themselves, but they're just operating on basic movement, survival, growth-oriented consciousness, if it comes across other species and other portions of its own species for long enough, it is its own kind of friction. And through that friction, through that contrast, it starts to develop greater and greater and greater awareness of the fact that, hey, I am here and he or she is over there. And one of the most obvious examples of later stage, later second density stage creatures is pets. They are attracted to spend time with the third slash fourth density teachers. So we give them a name. We call them by their name. They start to respond to their name. We feed them at the same time every day. They no longer have to hunt and be instinctual as much. And they start to appreciate affection and interspecies relationship. And so then it starts to develop greater and greater and greater awareness with the reflection of us constantly looking at them, constantly appreciating them, constantly giving them a name. They start to naturally develop. They're already in the later stages, otherwise they won't become pets. But if they're already pets, they're in the later stages and they're learning the lessons of self-awareness, which humans aid and assist in. So this is, in a way, a very beautiful and palpable experience of inter-density communication and teacher teaching, teacher-student. And of course, every student teaches the teacher, as we all learn from our pets as well, about other kinds of things. So I'm, I'm hinting at that because there's a lot of inter um, dimensional or interdensity communication happening on the higher levels to us as well, which is part of what this is as well. This, in, this exchange is part of that or one of the expressions of that. But there's many ways within which these densities communicate among themselves to help grow and aid and assist and accelerate the understanding of consciousness to merge back into unity eventually. So, then we reach third density with which we are very familiar. You have a name, you know that you are, you know that I'm over here, you know that you're over there, you have played the territorial game of me versus you, you have um, become acutely aware of yourself as an isolated, separated individual, as an I am individual, correct? So this is what we've been exploring for millennia as a species, the humanoid form in this way is a vehicle, is one of the many potential vehicles of third density consciousness exploring itself and having a template to reflect upon itself through. That is the human experience. The human experience has been for a long time strictly third density experience. Um, according to my knowledge, about 75,000 years, which is actually, this is the shortest density of all densities in terms of space-time experience. This is the most intense. And this is where the level of choice comes in. Because if you remember the animal, that becomes self-conscious slowly. When it reaches a certain vibratory state of self-consciousness or self-awareness, its consciousness is then able to take on another form, to express itself through another vehicle, of another template of gaining that mirror experience on a day-to-day -day basis, the experience of being human. Now, when they first, in a way, enter the third density realm of understanding, uh, they're not that smart, usually. They're not that intelligent they are just beginning to explore what it's like to be a self-consciousness. And so what you'll see is that they still regain that innocence. And in a way, without judging, you can see there, even at this high stage of exploration, there are still, not as much to that extent anymore, but there are still beings that are exploring on a, on a different level of self-consciousness. Uh, there's different priorities. There is usually a great innocence about them as well. Great ignorance, we could say, but innocence, I prefer the word. So it's an innocent type of self-awareness initially where it's not yet aware of the fact that it is on a journey. It's not yet aware of the fact that it has a spirit. It's not yet aware of the fact that it has choice. 
It's simply going about, it's kind of responding in an instinctual way still, because it still has that remnants of understanding. It's not quite as reflective of its self-beingness uh, to really know that it has choice and that it has creative abilities and that it can choose its path, that it can choose service to self, it can choose service to others, it can make all these different choices in life, it can choose who it is, what it wants to experience itself as. It doesn't quite know it yet until later. So let's say halfway or even before halfway through third density cycle for a consciousness, what happens is that the being starts to regain free will. The being starts to regain choice. At some point it reaches a level of vibration where it starts to, sometimes intuitively and instinctually and semi-consciously, but it starts to know on some level that it is a being with a spirit, that it has choice, that it is a soul in that way, exploring a journey. When it realizes that, whether consciously in verbal terms or instinctually or intuitively, it actually gains or it is, in a sense, and spirited. Spirit is always already available to any one of these. In potentiation, everything is available. So I'm not saying that um, less intelligent humanoid beings don't have a spirit. I'm not saying animals don't have a spirit, and I'm not saying that rock does not have spirit. But I'm saying that when that choice point has been reached in third density, and all of you have reached that, um, so let that not be a question, but I'm just explaining the evolution of it, as soon as you reach that level, you pass the threshold of choice, of remembering in a sense, or knowing. You become and spirit in that way. Your connection with spirit becomes active. And now you're of to, in a sense, a good start, but also a very, very intense cycle of compression. Third density is a very intense cycle of compression. And it has something that is unique to this density. Not even first and second density have it, and definitely fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh density understandings and beings and levels and planes of existence don't have the single thing that makes this such an intense ride. And that is what has been called in some of the terminology that I refer to and that I'm very inspired by when it comes to this since a very young age is um, the veil of forgetfulness. In other words, when you're human, you have no clue who you are beyond this life. You have no memory, you have no access to your memory of who am I, except for intuition, except for instinctual recognition, except for the drive to seek for who you are, to remember who you are. And to a very great extent, the veil of forgetfulness can be relieved, can be released, can be penetrated. And that's what many of you are doing. Those that are interested in spiritual teachings and teachers and practices are usually those that have a very strong sense. They're at the edge of moving from third to fourth density in their understanding, in their level of consciousness, and they know that this is a prime time. This is a time where this cycle, as part of planet Earth, there's many other planets you can go to if you want to continue to explore third density, but this is a very prime, compressed, condensed, intense space-time period where many different types of consciousnesses, all part of this consciousness, and with influences from higher and sometimes lower, come together in this mismatch of intense conflict, this intense friction. Again, friction teaches us more and greater self-awareness. It's through the friction of pain and suffering and joy and pleasure and other selves versus self that we gain relationship, in other words, that we gain so much reflection of who am I? What do I feel? Why do I feel the way I feel? Where do I come from? What do I want? Who am I truly? What do I want to express here? Why am I here? Those type of questions are generated because of the friction. If everything was absolutely effortless and non-intense, as it tends to be in the higher densities, you would not come to the point of choice as quickly as you would in third density in the way that it's set up at present. We have our prime movers to thank for that. So if you don't like it, take it up with God. Um, apparently it has learned from many previous creations as our gods are extensions, as our God consciousnesses are extensions or expressions of the new form of consciousness, having learned from all that in a sense, they know what is most effective catalyst for consciousness to wake up to itself as efficiently as possible. And it's still in the process of refining this, and you are all contributing to our sun in that sense, getting to harvest more knowledge and understanding of how creation works and how to most efficiently and harmoniously yet effectively express 
the most amount of or generate the most amount of varied experience of the one in ex in the experiential realm of of consciousness. Does that make sense? Awesome. <laughs> um, so at some point we start to choose. What do we choose to, uh, from? Mainly it is that sense of either love that extends or the compression and contraction of what we could call selfishness. That's in a sense the main choice. And there's many variations within those two choices of who you want to be, how you want to conduct yourself, what you want to move into, etc. But mainly the choice here is that of service to self or service to other selves in that sense ultimately knowing that it's the same self. However, when we talk about service to self, it comes from a perception of selfishness in the way that we have seen many people operate here in our consciousness. And that's not a negative thing, it's another expression. It is negative in nature in that sense, but the fact that it's negative is not a bad thing. Negativity is also an expression of the infinite. And it is up to each free will to express infinity in the way that he or she deems fit. So it is a valid choice to choose to be of service to yourself in a negative way. You could do that through domination, through um, enslavement, through conquering, and we've seen that in the past. There's many beings that have expressed themselves in that way and have explored themselves in that way. doesn't ultimately mean that because they express themselves in a single life in that way that they ultimately make that choice. They do build up a certain polarity, a certain spiritual will, power, energy into the direction of negativity. Nevertheless, that is still a valid expression. And the more of that spiritual power, the more of that intensity of self that you gain, whether through the positive or the negative path, you are then able to jump paths that much more easily because you gain the potential power in a kinetic form, that you gain polarity, spiritual polarity. I'm not sure if any of this makes sense, but just let it intuitively make sense to the best of your ability. So with every contrasting experience that we have, be it negative or positive, be it dominating or generous or serving, we build a certain type of spiritual willpower through our everyday experiences with life. We generate a greater and greater intensity or a fire in a way, a fire of being, a spark, a fire of con self-consciousness. And this is in a way similar to pulling an elastic band further and further and further back, therefore being able to generate that much more free will consciously, that much more power consciously. Does that make sense? And also, it allows us to penetrate secrets of the universe with that much more ease and, and efficiency and uh, quickness. Does that make sense? So that's the polarity that we build in a certain direction. That's the spiritual power that we regain. It's the free will that we regain. To a point where we become more and more and more and more and more powerful, more and more and more and more and more God-like, closer and closer in our understanding to unity or to our um, prime mover's original state, if that makes sense, which ultimately is love. Uh, just a side note for those concerned about this, the negative path cannot continue past sixth density because that's where it gets confused and that is where it no longer understands how to maintain that separation because it doesn't see that separation anymore. And so the selfish path is doomed to fail. Nevertheless, it's a val very valid expression as well of the infinite one up to that point. Um, and one can shift at any given moment. So that's why this is the choice. It's the choice to gain spiritual awareness of yourself, awakening of yourself, consciousness of self, and with that, gain greater polarity or greater potential for action, potential for work. The potential that you already have for work is activated the more you know who you are, what you want, etc. That's why we can also see in negatively oriented people that do have a very great sense of unconsciousness, but nevertheless they do have a very strong sense of who they are, let's say in a business world or a corporate setting, and it's all about the money and it's all about um, the petrol dollar industry, for example. And it's all about maintaining that elite little group of the rich at the expense of everyone else. There may be a lot of negativity in that, but why is it also so effective? We got to give them at least that. They have upheld that particular paradigm for a pretty long time, and they're pretty darn good at it. Why are they pretty darn good at it? It's because they have gathered, they have amassed, they have regained a lot of their free will. And with free will, whether you like it or not, as a positively oriented entity, comes a lot of spiritual influence, a lot of spiritual power in that way. A lot of the power to manifest, a lot of the power to generate. So 
That's why there's a lot of powerful people that are selfishly oriented in that way. Which again, as a positively oriented being, which I'm convinced every single one in this room is, even though you don't have to be, it's very important that we appreciate both polarities as being an expression of the one. Because if we start fighting that, they are actually conquering your polarity. Does that make sense? Negatively oriented entities, if you see them as negative, they're getting exactly out of it what they want, which is fine. It's not a battle. It's not like, let's deprive them of their selfishness. But it's for your, the sake of your own journey, if you wish to move in a direction of service to others, doesn't mean you're not including yourself, because without including yourself, you're absolutely effectiveless. No, there's no effe efficiency in your service if you don't include your own sense of worthiness, your own sense of comfort, your own sense of joy and love and following your own passion. But for most of you, this is oriented towards harmony, towards understanding, towards compassion, towards love. And again, this is where this whole talk becomes perhaps a little more relevant to your everyday single experience. What do you choose on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you choose to be of service? First of all, how do you do that? By raising your frequency, by being the best you can be. That may seem selfish to spiritually oriented people, but it's actually not. It's not the selfish path to follow your joy, to follow your heart, to execute your excitement. That is not the negative path. So make no mistake, it's not that black and white. It's not, oh, if I do something for myself, I'm going down the negative path. That's not at all what I'm saying. You can sense a clear distinction. Take me, for example. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much um, including myself in my service to others. I'm very much honoring my own, my own um, desire, my own passion, my own influence. But you'll be able to sense, maybe not, but y hopefully you'll be able to sense a clear difference between me and someone that is actually selfishly oriented out of the perception that there is separation and that they need to amass for themselves as much as they want and enslave other people. My sense of well-being is not, is not dependent upon you guys being somehow slaves or followers of what I do or who I am. Does that make sense? So there's a very free way to be yourself. So even in the selfless path of service to others, even as you make that choice to generate harmony and to generate the positive expression of service, you, you have to go through yourself. There's no other way to do that. So... It, there's all these subtleties, so it, it's not as black and white as I make it sound, so don't take it as black and white. Just know that you are worthy of infinite love, you are worthy of everything you desire, and that is not negative. Now, if you, especially if you include the integrity aspect in this, the integrity being you don't have to take away someone else's joy in order to gain yours. And that is the prime misperception or perception choice of a selfish or negatively oriented being is that they want to deprive you other portions of creation as much as they can of their joy in order to feel really amazing about themselves so in that way yes you have to go through self yes you have to honor what you desire but you'll see that in the service to other self oriented entity there is a great sense of generosity there's a great sense of abundance being overflowing, it's not contained, it's not all amassed for the self. It's seen that all is part of it and to share is to love and to share is to ascend oneself and to gain even greater polarity and even greater free will and even greater power to create what is beautiful. Does this make sense so far? Okay, so this has been a mismatch, um, not a mismatch, a mix, how do you call that, when everything is jumbled together? Mix bag, for example, yeah, a mix, yeah. So planet Earth has been a mixed bag of vibrations. Many, many influences from quote-unquote past realities and past planetary civilizations have collided on this sphere for the past 75,000 years and explored many, many conflicts between the traditional view of good and evil or selfishly oriented and unselfishly oriented creatures or service to self mm. and, or service to others with the inclusion of self-empowerment. So um, we have come to this point of having already chosen as a civilization that what this planet will become is a positively oriented fourth density civilization, inhabited planet. So, or not, whatever, you know. The one goes, yeah, it's all good for me, it doesn't matter. It's like, 
Um, but for us, on a no more relative level, that's good to know. It's good to know that in 50 years from now, we most probably, of course, everything is possible. Everything can shift. But in, according to the probability lines, in the metaphysical counterpart of the physical, the parallel, the non-physical parallel of the physical, which generates the physical, according to those highly probable lines and rhythms, we are entering and have, to a large extent, already entered into a positively oriented fourth density civilization. That's what we're priming up to become. Um, so on a relative level, it's good to know that 50 years from now, we won't be enslaved by some kind of elitist government that has full control, because there are those planets, and there are even those versions of Earth, in a way. So it's good to know that it's all going to be equalized and harmonious, as we have always pictured it in the New Age thought and the hippies and like, love, man, love, love, love. So it's going to be love and understanding in a self service to others with the inclusion of self-empowerment oriented way to the extent where at some point it's no longer relevant or appealing for a being that wants to express selfishly to quote unquote incarnate or visit or come to this place because it doesn't stand a chance. Whereas in the past millennia, it did stand a chance. But now we have collectively decided that it won't stand a chance. That has been the decision for planet Earth at this timing. So we are literally at the edge, literally at the threshold between third and fourth density, which explains the rapid acceleration in technological developments, the rapid acceleration in communication devices and communication globally and international communication. Um, it explains the acceleration you see in your personal life where time starts to fade and you're not sure whether it goes slower or faster. It seems to both go f faster as well as slower simultaneously, and it just becomes more and more dreamlike. Has anyone noticed? Just raise your hand honestly if you've noticed that your relationship to your physical environment has seemingly become more quasi-physical, has seemingly become more non-physical, has seemingly become more dreamlike. I'm not saying it's quite exactly at the dream stage level yet of malleability, but have you noticed that things move more quickly for you in the past few years. Awesome. Have you noticed an increase in the density of lightness that you can sense when you're quiet for a moment and you're just being present with nature and you're hearing a bird and you're watching a gas station and you're watching someone talk to someone else, but when you're in the center of silence for a moment, have you noticed how more so than 10 years ago your environment seems to talk to you, it seems to reflect you, it seems to be alive, it seems to be more vibrant, have you noticed? You will notice that more and more and more and more and more and more as the density increases to become a full-fledged fourth density environment. And of course, all of this exists within consciousness and as part of collective agreements and all that. But you will see that on what you call the physical level, your environment starts to become more like water, less like dense rock. It will become more changeable, more malleable, more plastic. Does that make sense? Okay. You continue to notice this. That's why it's important to understand some of my other teachings, which is that empowerment. That is, you are vibrationally responsible for what you attract to yourself because the time lag between thinking and creating becomes less and less and less and less. So you have a negative thought and one minute later it appears and you go, oh, that's weird. I better pay attention. Yes, you better pay attention S for your own sake. Right? He, because you want this to be a joyful experience. You want this to be a joyful expression of your theme, not a nasty one, not a heavily intense, dense one, dense in the negative sense. You want this to be a joyful ride. And it can be. Every personal theme can be explored where the subjective experience is as such that it is actually appreciative and in joy and in bliss. It doesn't have to be in pain and in suffering and in regret and in guilt and in unselfworthiness and all these negative things. You can actually enjoy your theme even if it comes with intense challenge which is part especially of the second or the third the last portion of third density experience is very intense everything is condensed everything comes together this is the final last chance that you have as part of this civilization to express all these negative things all these unexplored portions of yourself whether they be from this personal life or from the civilization at large because you want to be of service and you want to reflect that and you want to transform that by embodying a portion of its negativity and then transforming it into positivity, whether it is influenced or communicated between your parallel extensions of your soul, your parallel incarnations, whatever it is, y this is the time, this is the last chance you have to suffer 
in the way that we have suffered. I'm not saying you won't ever be able to suffer again. I'm not saying you won't a ever be able to hurt again, but it's going to increasingly become less and less and less possible to experience psychological suffering. So that's why everyone is hurrying up. That's why everyone is barfing on this collective table that we call human civilization. That's why everything is barfed up right now. That's why we're swimming through puke every once in a while, collectively. It's because everything is being brought out in the open. It's the last chance we have to throw it all out on the table, have a clear look at it, and make the freaking choice. Who are we? What do we desire? What is true? Etc. And this intensity, this malleability, this this stage of third density, which functions sort of like forging, forging a clay pot to become crystallized, or forging any other type of like metal in a certain form, and then it hardens in that particular way. It crystallizes in that particular way. That's what we've been doing. The first stage, we've been becoming aware that we have choice, and the second stage, the second half, in that sense, of our development as a third density entity, we've shifted our focus not so much on realizing that we have choice and self-consciousness, but actually doing something with that. Like, okay, so then what do I want to be? Again, this is an almost unfair time period. This is an almost unfair density the ter in terms of intensity, in terms of expectation, in terms of what's possible, but it's also highly benign because of it. It's also highly interesting because of this. It's a short space time where everything is mixed together and there's intense conflict and intense friction all over the place in all ways and all levels of your being so that you have the most amount of catalyst to choose from. Without catalyst, you don't know you have choice. So humanity has been generating lots of catalysts for choice. So it's a good thing, bottom line. It's a great thing. Be happy with it. Be grateful for it. Or not. Make your choice. Who do you want to be? So we are moving into love and understanding. We are moving into non-separation between other portions of this civilization. Let me quickly look at my notes here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. So also the, the fourth density is also the density where the veil of forgetfulness starts to disappear. In other words, cross density and cross dimensional and cross interbeing communication and revelation is opened up once again. This does not happen from one day to the next. It is presently occurring. It's presently happening and you can gradually more and more taste the effects of that. One of the most prominent ones that you'll notice most immediately is that you'll start to become very, very sensitive to everyone around you. You start to become very, very acutely aware when something's up. Annoyingly so, I might add. Or maybe not. Your choice. I choose. It's annoying sometimes. So, <laughs> but also great, obviously, because it's a great testament of the increase of vibration and ability. So you'll see that the denseness, the veil of forgetfulness starts to loosen up, starts to become transparent. And for example, one thing that will also be w very different in fourth density is the understanding of death as one example. as one expression of the veil disappearing, of this honesty no longer being able to be the case. The veil between beings and the veil between your being and your being disappearing more and more. And again, that's a gradual shift, but quite rapid in terms of how we experience it you will no longer think the same about death. You will, in fact, be able to continue to communicate with those that pass on according to our standards, according to what we call passing on. So fear of death will start to disappear both for yourself and others. That's just one expression, though. You will start to be able to not read minds, but sense the vibration, be able to match it, and then have the similar experience that they are having. And that happens more and more all the time. That's why fourth density is the density within which most civilizations start to move from exploring themselves as a self-entity to exploring themselves as a group entity or a group consciousness or as one of my main inspirations for all this, which is Ra or the Law of One material, if you've ever heard of it. If not, it's available free online as PDFs and you can also support them, obviously, by buying the books physically. Um, they call it a social memory complex. They call this a um, mind-body-spirit complex, the entity, and they call fourth density group consciousness when a civilization merges with each other 
and all of your data, all of your past lives and past experiences, of course, past being relative because it's all now, parallel, becoming available to me. In other words, if I were to go to a different civilization, billions of miles from here in my spaceship, and I was to communicate with a different civilization that I, I had the ability to somehow communicate with, and they would ask me a question about an experience, what it's like to have a certain kind of experience as a human being, and one of you, as part of my group consciousness, even though I'm removed billions of years, or light years, according to space-time, if you have had that experience, but I have not had that experience, I have full access to being able to talk about that as if it was my personal experience. In other words, our civilization becomes a walking library that is completely exposed to each other. It's the disappearance, fourth density is the disappearance of the ability to be dishonest on any level of your being. So get ready. Are you able to be, dis are you able to be honest? Are you able to be exposed? Are you able to be naked? Are you able to be vulnerable? Are you able to be seen for what you are, what you think, the beliefs that you have, the experiences you've gone through, is that, can you just lay that all out on the table and trust? If not, then you've got some work to do on this aspect because you'll be forced to be exposed. More and more. So, it's one of the, it's one of the conditions of becoming part of a group consciousness is that you're able to be completely honest and transparent because you have to be. There is no other way. And it's in this total transparency of your own being that you are then able to vibrationally lock into a group consciousness or a social memory complex that is then able to s explore the one infinite mystery in the form of creation in completely new ways, where love and understanding and compassion get a very, very intimate, intimate feel to them because everyone is now perceived to be yourself. This does not mean, by the way, that some people fear this, that this is the loss of individuation, but it's not. You'll still be you, as much as you are you today. It's just that you gain complete access to the data base of every other being that is vibrationally in alignment with your theme, with your purpose, with your group consciousness. So you're added onto, you're not detracted from. So don't be afraid of group consciousness. It doesn't mean you're lost and you become like a hive mind or like an end in that way, an end mind. It is more that every, every individual adds its spark to the group consciousness and it is all transparent to each other. This will happen more and more very, very rapidly. And you'll see that since we've chosen for it to be positively oriented, the negative entities and the negative corporations and the negative structures that we have built in the past few thousand years are going to crumble and fall as they are presently crumbling and falling and disappearing and losing their vibrational foothold in this collective. They no longer quite know where to go, what to do with it. And very soon, McDonald's will start selling organic, um, healthy foods. Because that's the only way it can go. It will either wither and die. This is just one example. It's sort of a dream of mine. Wouldn't it be awesome? They're so widespread. They're so universally known on this planet. They're so exposed and present. They have this omnipresence. Now, if they would suddenly start like handing out little spiritual teachings while you go through the drive through and they give you this organic salad, that would be such a powerful influence. But this is one of the, just an analogy for the choice that has to be made by those that are in position of power collectively. They will no longer find that their negative intentions are being met. So they lose their vibrational foothold in this world and they have to either shift along into the positive vibration or somehow create a circumstance that will end their life and will have their journey be explored elsewhere if they do insist upon the negatively oriented path, which again is completely fine. It's another, another expression of infinity. We're not judging them, right? Right? Great. And that's how we allow ourselves to feel continuously good, even in the face of what others call negativity. We now call it, thank you for expressing infinity. I know how I want it. I see how you want it. That does not match up with each other, and that's awesome. Thank you. So, then we all become a group consciousness and we live for many, 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 tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years of civilization of fourth density understanding and learning. And then what? Then we'll start moving on to the fifth density. We start to learn the lessons of wisdom and light. One of the distortions of fourth density understanding 
one of the flaws, the inherent flaws of fourth density understanding, one of the many traps of fourth density understanding, one of the many incompletenesses that it then starts to seek to complete by turning itself to the light of wisdom, is that it tends to be a little overzealous in its service to others, which right now is a good choice. It's not a bad choice right now. I'm not saying you cannot already balance it. You can, definitely can. But if anything, choose to be of service to others if you can, when you can, as often as you can, and feel actually good about it, feel empowered through it. However, fourth density has the tendency to give so much of itself because that's how it accelerated its polarity into fourth density understanding that in a way it's incomplete, it's imbalanced. Something, a, a piece is missing, a piece of understanding is missing. That's when the reaction or the, the gaze starts to look upwards towards the light or towards fifth density understanding of wisdom, which is more as our traditional spiritual teachers would embody the image of that, which is I'm just sitting here, there's not much movement going on, I'm not doing a lot of action in the world physically, I'm absorbed within myself, and I know I contain the whole universe, and that's where it's at. So the... Um, sometimes individuals choose to depart from a collective consciousness or a group consciousness or social memory complex to completely embody that self-sufficiency and aloneness. But more often than not, they will choose to continue to be a portion of a group consciousness, of a social memory complex, but they'll simply be more and more non-physically oriented, more and more everything is done, in a sense, astrally or mentally. Not much action is executed with their particular vehicle, which is already quite uh, non-physical at that point, very malleable. They can shape themselves as whatever they want to shape themselves. They can appear or disappear. They can travel across space and time in an instant, etc. You can all do this when you're at the fifth density activation of your vibra vibratory state of being. But you will find that they will often just be still or almost non-existent physically in the terms of action and work. And they will, on the mental, non-physical counterplane of all of these, they will do their work and exploration on that sense, on that level. And they will have, in a, in a way, they'll have other beings. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> not relevant. So that's that of light and wisdom, where you realize everything is within yourself. And now your gaze turns away a little bit from, at least temporarily, at least while you're in that stage, density, which, make no mistake, this is not just a human being realizing something. On this level, Things are completely different. Your environment is unrecognizable from today. It's even beyond dreamlike. It's, it's, it's uh, very dense with life and vibration. So I'm really talking about evolutionary scales that are hugely different one from the other, that are really, especially from three upwards, the differences become exponential in terms of expansion. So even a fully developed fourth density entity, if they were to actually be here in active form, they would be able to do things and know things and have an influence on you that is godlike to us, let alone fifth and sixth density and seventh density. So I'm really talking about a completely different way of being that is quite unimaginable to our terms, to our standards, to our agreements, to our past knowledge. So this is all imaginative. Like just imagine it to the widest degree that you can, the most expanded way that you can, and you're probably approaching accuracy more than if you think Oh, I'll just have a physical body and I'll sit in a cave like a yogi would, realize something. No, this is different. There is there's practically endless power here. There's practically endless freedom here. Um, so things would look different. You would learn different lessons. Priorities would shift, etc. So the being retreats within itself, becomes completely self-sufficient, which we would term wisdom as wisdom. It becomes embodied in light itself. It becomes light itself. And then to balance that out once again, because that in itself is also incomplete. As you know, many yogis are incomplete, right? In a way, in their understanding. So similarly, a fifth density being does not have the complete understanding that it seeks, that it searches for. So then, to, in order to balance that, it reaches for balance. It reaches for the density of unity, which is the density of total light itself, pure white light itself, in that sense. Completely non-physical. This is also the level that your higher self resides at, your higher self consciousness is a sixth density, a mid-sixth density consciousness available to you, and it is actually your future self looking back upon you, being available to you. So in other words, when you reach sixth density, mid-sixth density, you will leave 
a replica of your consciousness available to all of your past times. And you have to remember that from this space, past is no obstacle. It is present here. So your higher self, what, we would, what I often call your higher self, is quite literally you billions of years from now being available to you with everything that you've learned. So time is all messy. Time is all non-existent, cross-dimensional, cross-density. But in this density, you develop or you, you gaze, turn your gaze towards the balance of love and light, of love and wisdom, of knowing when not to do something, when not to be of service in a certain way, and knowing when to be of service in a certain way. So this is where utter selflessness meets utter self-sufficiency. And it's a really, really, it's a really extremely fine-tuned, balanced state of consciousness. Um, and, uh, yes. So, at some point, it feels like it completes its service, and one of the ways that it really completes its service in mixed Sixth density, mid sixth density, is um, it it leaves it leaves a replica in a sense of its own consciousness, its whole database as an entity, as an individual with its own memory, vast as it is, connected to oversouls and civilizations and social memory complexes as it is. It leaves all that it has learned available to all portions of itself below that state. And it itself, the entity itself, which now leaves a replica, in a sense, a replica, a portion of its consciousness, a replication of its consciousness, to all of these parts, downwards, to still be available of service, it itself, the entity itself, just like you would call you, you, or, oh, this is my sense of self, you, in that sense, in that stage, would feel that your service is complete, you've explored as much as you can explore, you've extracted as much benefit as you can out of being of service, and balancing love and wisdom. And now your gaze turns towards the Creator itself completely. Meaning that you start entering or readying yourself for the gateway or the completion density or the seventh density, which is the final density of this octave, uh, octave, octave? octave of, in other words, this universe. You've reached the end of the universe. This is the end of our creation. Congratulations you are about to lose all identity, you're about to lose all memory, you're about to lose all memory, why? Not because you're going to lose all memory, not because you're going to lose all identity, but because you're merging with the awareness that's already aware of all that is. And if you're aware of all that is, there is no more personal memory because everything is inside your awareness. So when you are aware of the entirety of creation, you are ready to transcend that creation. And this is the case for every density. Once you've mastered, once you've become one with the environment of that density in your understanding, once you feel at one with that density, you are ready to move on to the next density. And in a sense, we see this in, on a mini scale in the lessons that we learn in life and in everything that we do. We start at the bottom. We're excited about this project. The project feels like it's out there. We feel like we're this participant in this project out there. And as we walk the steps of that project, whether it's starting a business, whether it's um, um, a relationship or a marriage, at some point, as we master that theme of life, that particular aspect of our consciousness projecting itself as out there, it starts to feel more and more and more like it's actually integrated, like it's actually inseparable from us, it's actually mastered by us, and it starts to look a little boring. It's, it's mastered. Once you've mastered a certain belt in martial arts, you're no longer really going to do those same katas because they're not that interesting to you. You could, but you have mastered that. You have embodied that entire environment that previously seemed to offer such a rich template out there for you to go walk around in and explore. But now it feels like it's all inside of you and you're ready for the next thing. In a very real sense, this is the case. Hello? This is the case for each density threshold. Does that make sense? At the end of seven density, that's the case for the entirety of creation. Entirety of creation. All that is within this creation, you are merged with the awareness of all that is simultaneously now. Beginningless foreverness 
in a way, in manifest form. Timelessness in manifest form, foreverness. So sixth density entity start to be entity starts to be ready for this, and it merges itself with all that is. Doesn't mean it's not still able, even in its merged state, to in a way reemerge as an individual entity, appearing to the lower density selves. It's still able to be its own individual because you will never lose your I am. It's simply that you'll move on with your I am to become more like a god of a galaxy in that way, past all this, in the next octave of experience, where things are completely different, and I can't speak to that because, frankly, I don't know anything about it. Um, great. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let me check my notes. <laughs> Could I repeat that? Yeah. That's funny. What is it? I'm not sure if I'll enter it, but maybe I will. You see entities in this physical reality who are, for example, stuck in the old paradigm. They're choosing to be a part of the old paradigm. Yes. Yes. What happens to them when? In what way? As the frequency gets higher, if they insist to be stuck in a certain pattern, they will somehow choose to continue to experience that pattern. If that means that it has to, s to mean the end of their physical life as part of the civilization, then that will be the case, and they will explore themselves in a similar fashion, in a different way, in an environment that still supports that vibratory exploration. Very quickly, in this transition, we will no longer tolerate vibrationally not personally, not socially, but vibrationally, this environment that we're entering into will no longer be able to tolerate, to carry, to host, be host to certain type of vibrational explorations. So the people that you refer to, the entities, you, the beings of creation that you refer to that insist upon certain explorations, they will choose those explorations, but they may not be compatible with our particular environment at that stage. So they will explore elsewhere. Or they will reach a breaking point where they decide to quantum leap along with us into an understanding. And in many ways, that's why I'm here. In many ways, that's why many quote-unquote spiritual teachers are here. And in many ways, that's why you guys are here to increase, it sounds very new agey, but quite literally to increase the vibration of this planet, to increase the vibration of this collective consciousness, to literally increase the vibration. If you increase the vibration, there is more light channeled in every cubic inch of space-time experience space-time consciousness. It allows for more light, it allows for more clarity, it allows for more consciousness, a denser level of consciousness. That is equal to raising your frequency, raising your vibration. That's why joy is important, because joy is light being translated into the physical body as an experience that you recognize as joy, as bliss. That's why follow your joy is a direct path into increasing your frequency and becoming more and more able to be a host, a co-host, a co-creator, and a host to other beings, a bridge for other beings wanting to also make that leap, an example. By example, not by proselytizing, but by being an example through your own vibratory state. That's why to be of selfless service to others, you have to be self-centered. You have to be, in a sense, already kind of understand the wisdom aspect, start to include some of these teachings right now. Absolutely love and understanding, absolutely crucial, the most crucial right now. But many of you have already decided that that's what you desire. Many of you have already practiced that. Many of you are practicing that with your relationships on a daily basis. Also include some of the wisdom and the light, knowing when to step in, when not to step in, when to simply be more of yourself and to be free in that way and to be able to be a service even more. So, so we're all bridges to this acceleration happening. We can't skip any steps yeah. on the way? Without the negativity, we could not have come to the contrast of understanding ourselves and making the choice, right? To be positively oriented. <laughs> exactly. So. What is it that like, the negativity works? What, like, how, what purpose is the negativity 
Oh, yeah. As, like, what purpose does it, does it say? I mean, in a way, you've been speaking to that, but what... Can, can you ask concisely as you can state your question? Yeah, sure. Uh, what... That was wisdom speaking, you see? Yeah, okay. Love and understanding, if it was overzealous, it would have been like, oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. And love, light, wisdom at the extreme would be like, what's this? What was this question? I don't get your question. And the balance of it would be like, can you restate your question, please? Does it okay. make sense? Just as it makes sense. Yeah. It I'll operates in human life all the time, and you can actually learn the lessons of unity balance already while you're still here. Right, okay. It's very subtle, but go on. So, everything you're in, like, like you were talking about experientially and intuitively, uh -huh. it's like, intuitively it, it makes total sense, but it's like, it, experientially, sometimes I feel like I, 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 I get why the negativity serves the positivity, or mm -hmm. the evolution, but in a way, I, there's also a way I don't quite get that. What don't you get? I don't get what you don't get. Okay, okay. Does anyone else hear my question? Is anyway. Um, okay. Yes, I'm, no, I'm not going to answer this right now. I do apologize, but I don't. And I will continue with one more aspect that I want to actually address before the end of this meeting. I might choose, I'm not sure yet, but I might choose to make next session available since this was so dense in information. And also for the viewers, just let it sink in and see what comes up for you. Write your questions down as clearly as you can, and I might, maybe not, but I might next week just do purely questions about all this, just to like wrap it up and um, be able to continue with other types of teachings who are more practically oriented again, but then at least you have this context clear. Understand there's not a lot of question t time right now, but I want to talk about the idea of wanderers just ever so quickly. Wanderers, the, a wanderer is the idea, and again, this terminology I picked up from this similar type of uh, work that I continue to read. As I started reading that when I was 15, and I read it multiple times throughout my own journey, every time understanding more of the subtleties of it, um, and it becoming more accurate and precise in my consciousness. And there's nothing quite out there that's as accurate as this that I have found in terms of material. Again, it's called the Love One. Uh, look it up if you want to. The idea of the wanderer is that a being that is n in its native vibration has already experienced planetary cycles of third density, sometimes fourth density, sometimes fifth density, etc. So that uh, the idea is that the fourth, fifth, or usually sixth, fourth, fifth, or sixth density native entity chooses to throw a portion of its consciousness into incarnation and physically and psychologically embody a portion of the collective of a third density civilization that's under the veil of forgetfulness. This being will be, on that level, completely human, completely a part of that creation. They will suffer the same issues, they will have the same challenges, they will have the same veil of forgetfulness. However, their light is so bright that they are more likely to remember. They are more likely to have that urge, that drive to understand themselves. Nevertheless, they have to deal with the same things that humans deal with. But they come with the blueprint intention, with the light vibration intention behind the veil that is urging them, that is sending them suggestions all the time to go a certain direction, to be a certain way, to be of service in a certain way. So these wanderers usually incarnate with a portion of their consciousness into a third density civilization, especially when they're in need of transforming or or elevating their consciousness because the shift is occurring within that planet at that time. And in order to harvest, quote unquote harvest, as they call it, um, as many people from third into fourth density as they can, they will come by bunches, usually, to be of service and to lighten the load, even if they don't ever really remember who they are. I've just been lucky. I've just been able to really follow that urge. But there's many, quote unquote, wanderers out there that do not have that privilege or that have not chosen that for whatever reason and that are more subject to the density of third density understanding uh, even though their whole being is not but they still on that level lighten the load even though they don't may may not talk about it they may not even consciously necessarily understand it but their predisposition vibrationally is to be of service to others and you see this all over the place and it is to share the light, and it is to be more joyful, and it is to be inspirational, even if they are sad very often, or they are depressed very often, or they don't understand who they are very often. But still, just by 
bringing a portion of their native frequency into incarnation, they help lighten the vibration because everything is emanation. That's how we really teach. And the being that does that, that takes that quote-unquote risk, knows that they're going to be of service no matter what, even though they risk having to redo certain cycles of experience to quote-unquote work out what they have chosen to experience. So the idea of the wonder, and why do I even share this? I share this because some of you might have that. And this is not, disclaimer, I don't wish for this to become some kind of an identity stick for you to hold on to. I, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I'm a wanderer, or I'm not from here, that's why. Or I don't want it to be cut out in any way. And this is tricky. As a human being that's subject to psychological suffering and separation and isolation and victimization, to then hear someone that they trust, such as myself, perhaps, explain this, it's very easy to go, oh, that makes sense. Great. Now I have this permission slip to go, whatever, pell-mell. Yes, I do want to share this because it's a permission slip for you to understand yourself more and to feel more into who you are and uh, give more context to your experience here. That's why I share this. I share this so that you, within your own being, not to be arrogant towards anyone else with that, but to know why you're here. You're here to serve. And this is, in a way, it's the most humble lesson, is to throw a portion of yourself into a denser, way denser consciousness that you natively no longer need for your personal lessons, but to be of service, which is personal at this level, to balance service and love with wisdom. So eventually, even that is a personal and selfish choice. It's still for your own journey, because what better way to fine-tune the balance of love and light and wisdom and love than to incarnate in a ridiculous society such as ours? as a being that knows that all of this is redundant. And then how do you move about? Knowing you want to be of service and knowing that none of it makes sense. What a perfect lesson for yourself to gain even more spiritual polarity and even more power and even more direction into union back into the Creator. And eventually this whole creation, when every item, every unit of creation, all the way from what still is physical matter, has progressed to in sort of a linear fashion, progressional fashion, into the gateway completion density, when all has gathered and amassed a spiritual mass, a spiritual polarity of such nature that they start completely looking back into the creator itself, into merging back. When the desire of the first, the outward waves that keep expanding and expanding and expanding and creating, and then reaching such a sufficiency of having extracted all the benefit and all the learning and all the expansion you want to extract from that outward impulse like a heartbeat, then it starts to all coalesce back into what we would perceive as a gigantic galactic black hole, physically. That's what we would perceive it as, where all the light, all the different <coughs> densities turn back into the white light, and the white light is in turn compressed so much through that gravity, which is nothing but the physical gravity, but any type of gravity is really the manifestation of spiritual mass having been achieved. And then it coalescing back into the Creator. So all this, all this prismatically separated light of these densities become that white light once again, white light that unified white light that unified love light once again. It has completed its journey. The creation as a whole has reached its journey's end, and it coalesces back into this gigantic cosmic black hole, and the whole galaxy disappears in that sense. And for a period of timelessness beyond our ability to even label as timelessness in a completely different state than you know now, all the consciousnesses will merge as this one consciousness and, and in a sense germinate in this space of absolute timelessness and foreverness. Everything is assessed, everything is learned. And then it reemerges as a new creation. So, ponder this, sleep on it, download your own information, your own intuition, your own experience. Keep it balanced, keep it true, keep it pure, because if you start being overly arrogant, I'm not saying not to explore your arrogance, because it can be very helpful to allow yourself to be arrogant every once in a while, but just hold the space for it, hold the wisdom and love for it. Don't just be radically like at the whim of it. If you 
can continue to understand why you're here, whether that is because you're native to this civilization and you've reached the end of this particular cycle and you really feel a draw towards service to others and this positively oriented civilization, a fourth density group consciousness starting to form itself gradually. Know that that is who you are. Excellent, know that that's who you are. If you feel that you have a wandering instinct, that you have that wandering capacity, that capacity to share love to great extents already, to articulate wisdom to great extents already, or to simply have a balance of both already. And learning in your everyday life these very, very fine-tuned, subtle balances, putting yourself in positions where you're forcing yourself to teach the balance of love-light. If you do feel that your native consciousness is already rooted in one of those densities, either way, keep it really pure, keep it really high in its integrity, and just know that you're here to serve in some fashion. How do you serve? You serve by loving yourself, by serving yourself, but without the need to deprive anyone else of what they desire and what they choose. One of the hallmarks of unity, balance, consciousness, what becomes most paramount in this density is to respect free will utterly. When you respect free will completely, you are in resonance with the understanding of the one, the first distortion of the one. And that's a very high and empowering vibratory state to be in, to appreciate that all free will in all portions of creation are equally valid expressions of yourself. That is one of the things that is paramount in the sixth density understanding. But you can already include that in your vibratory state at present, even if you feel you are native to this state, to this civilization, and you'll naturally progress with them and continue to explore fourth density as humanity, as a collective humanity. Either way, keep it true to who you are, Keep it intuitive, keep it natural, keep it spontaneous, keep it free, keep it loving, keep it pure.